Hi. So, one more second. There should have been a word, and it was either moment or second, and not, but I think I said both. That probably did not make sense. One moment. There's a uh, lecture series um, from Yale, uh, David Blight, Yale Open University, um, one of the many open university courses, which I love the whole concept of an open university course, and this was a pretty decent one. Um, David Blight, The Civil War and Reconstruction Era? I don't remember. There'll be a link down there. Uh, point being, the first lecture is on the subject of why do we, and by we, I mean mostly but not exclusively, people who live in the United States and are part of the nation, why do we love the American Civil War? P.S. I'm going to say that sometimes because it's the name everybody uses. United States Civil War, America is like two continents. I hate the terminology. Point being, why do we love this thing, this war that happened? And the first time I listened to that lecture was years and years ago. I was still in college. And, um, I couldn't have told you. Um, I did, but I couldn't have told you why. And now I don't. I listened to the lecture again, the first lecture from this, this Open University course again, today. And I don't love the Civil War of the United States. And... I figure, looking at this difference in me, it's not going to explain for everybody, but it is a hypothesis. Because I think if you accept the way the United States as a propaganda entity, as a thing that advertises it, it advertises values as opposed to the many, many things that the U.S is if you're looking at its people, if you're looking at what gets television, what gets movies, what gets newspapers, that United States definitely loves our civil war. And I think it has to love our civil war because so many of, so many of the people in the country that was the United States then, those United States, so many of those people died that it was, that, that, that love it was maybe the only way they could deal with it is to be consumed by it, to find it this incredibly important thing. And if the United States is incredibly important to you, then it makes sense. I... Like, I was following... I was feeling the way I was taught to feel, which is, this is important. This is huge. Listen to these incredible stories. These are the stories 
to listen to. And... The love that... That United States, the United States that taught me love the Civil War, it starts somewhere in the vague before the Civil War, and it ends at the end of the Civil War. Everything afterwards is a different chapter in a different book and not the story we are taught not the story we are taught to revere we're taught this story to as this grand glorious duel or something this 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 grand war it, it, it is I also grew up susceptible to America's militarism it's it's idolization of the military and if if you idolize the military this is the war that killed the largest fraction of people in this country of all the wars in this of all the wars this country fought so you kind of have to love it if you love the military because this is like this is what militarists revere is the bravery and camaraderie bravery and camaraderie that happens in the context of killing in the context of a blatant attempt to destroy the what illusion of representative government, what illusion of democracy existed in this country to preserve the violent exploitation of a portion of that population that includes some of my ancestors. Not that I, not that ancestors are the most important thing to me, but like, like, if you want an excuse to think about slaves having, knowing that those knowing that the the history of the blueprint that built you was traces back the 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 the, the, the traces back to this it, it's it's a reason to think about them so I think the United States as it wants to be understood wants us to love its civil war wants us to be wants us to treat this as this event of cosmic importance kind of I keep coming back to it because it's just so blatant. And I haven't even seen this movie, so I might be wrong this whole time. But that freaking yesterday movie about the freaking alternate universe when nobody heard of the Beatles 
and the one person who remembered the Beatles made billions of hits. Because the Beatles is the most awesomest band of all time, right? It's not a band that's good and made good music in an era where that kind of music really clicked with people and became important as a cultural phenomenon as well as important for being skilled music makers. It, there's the... Like... Air is important because we have to breathe it. Because cause this kind of organism respires and that is part of how it survives. But there are things which are important because this is our pedestal. We have made a list of things to put on pedestals. And we'll put the Beatles over here. We'll put the Civil War of the United States of America right here. We'll put uh, Lincoln. His pedestal is actually sitting on top of that pedestal. It's even higher. Cool dude, but like, seriously, that... that Wow. Um. <sighs> I think. I think that's my hypothesis is. If this country is the most important thing to you, then you have to love its civil war. If this country as a military force is an important thing to you, then you have to love the war that killed more of its people than any other. By proportion. I think World War II wins for total, but the, it was a bigger country then, and we give so... We, we, we are... Consume, World War II is like the other one. It's the American Civil War, or U.S. Civil War, and World War II. Those are the two wars. I don't know anything about the Revolutionary War. Battle of York, the Battle of Yorktown is a song in the Hamilton musical, and that's literally the most I know about it. Because that's not... I mean, it, it is important, but it just doesn't have that same... I think the other thing about World War II and the U.S. Civil War is that they, they, they work really well... I don't... Okay. Like, I don't know what the difference is between those wars... And the Revolutionary War. It could just be pure coincidence that I missed out on that one. But. Yeah. It feels like. I love the American. I, I, I used to love the American Civil War for the same reason that I used to not notice. That Independence Day. The, the what's his name movie. Um, with, uh, the Jet Planes and the Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum. Um, that movie, I didn't notice it was, it was, like, blatantly pro-U.S. propaganda. Like, that's, I think, I think these have the same root which is, we're just taught that this is normal. Being consumed by this war is normal. Seeing the United States depicted this way is normal. That's what I wanted to make a vlog about. It's just...
I think if we want to answer the question, why do people care, care so much about this war, the, the U.S. Civil War, we have to answer that question by figuring out what purpose it serves in the story of the United States, in the different stories the United States tells of itself. Because, I mean, in some of those stories, this is the war that ended racism, because it ended slavery, right? So it's the war that ended racism. Sort of like how the, the civil rights movement ended racism, because you know, it, it, it did the thing, it ended racism, right? Yeah, cool. Um, Black Lives Matter, racism isn't, that's still a thing that needs to be said, and racism isn't over. But if you want to tell a story about racism being over, you can tell a story about the U.S. Civil War. And if you want to tell a story about white dominant, white supremacy being beautiful, then you can tell a story about the U.S. Civil War. You, you, can, you can tell a story about this rebellion that was performed to defend slavery. And you can either, the unpopular option is be like, yes, slavery was good, let's bring that back. That's the unpopular option because like people, it's, we're not taught to love slavery at this point. You, you, you have to be well into like indie, obscure, racism to be like yes let's let's just make slavery a thing again like you have to be real you have to be real really like invested in racism as a theory of how the universe works to get that wrong but you can make the the civil war about something else and keep that picture that you drew where rich white people are the whole world and everyone else gets shuffled off screen and those rich white people are happy being all rich and white and stuff and that's another story you can try to tell using the American Civil War and in that story you know, it's this tragic, it's this glorious tragedy, like, uh, 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 I don't know, Rogue One? Um, uh, uh, Independence Day? Uh, the, the, you know, those stories where it's like the hero dies at the end, but you love it because they were just so heroic. If you want to tell that story, if, if, if you want to tell the white supremacist story, Civil War, you can do that. You, 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 you. That story falls apart real quick if you start looking at the rhetoric of the people, of the politicians, leading up to and during the war. But if you if you Discard all of that. Grab, grab the handful of quotes that make everybody sound awesome and hammer in on the fighting bits. You can make it this story of honor and glory and this great tragic war. And hey, that's so popular that like freaking Firefly made the protagonist like literally use catchphrases the the what's it will rise again like that's that's from this shit from the racist shit but people love it because they want to imagine themselves as the heirs to that story of wealth built on <coughs> uh built on of of <coughs> Whatever it's built on, we're not talking about that slavery. We're, we're not talking about that. But but people love that story so much that that 
if you want to make a, a hero who, like, literally, I mean, you can just take this thing, like, maybe he was copying, uh, westerns that came before that did exactly that thing deliberately, but it's obvious. If it's not deliberate, it's damn near close to deliberate. But, yeah, like, I think, I think people love the American Civil War because, depending on what kind of story you, uh, it, 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 the American Civil War is great for both stories of the United States. Because cause I, I think of the United States as being two things. There is the words on, those, on all those documents and, and, and all those speeches about equality of the people, for the people, by the people. Inalienable rights. And slavery. Black chattel slavery. Specifically, we're white and therefore we can do what we want to these black people, to these indigenous people of this part of the world, to Japan and China and everywhere. All these other people, Africa, all these other people from all these other places aren't as good as us, so we can do what we want. That's that's one of the stories of the United States of America. The other story is the the is is that ideal of of it being a nation of equals of liberty, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's that, and there's racism, and. Whichever side you want to pick, you can tell a story of the the U.S. Civil War that makes, that, 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 that revs you up and makes you feel great about this country. Whichever one of them you want to pick. And I don't, I don't feel that way anymore. I don't want to feel that way anymore. I don't want to be thinking of, I don't want to be picking one of these. And being like, this is how I think of this country. And everything that's the other one is just it falling short of what it should be. I, it's what it is. I don't think the, the, the ideals of the United States... I think that they're important in that they're something like right. It's probably some details that are wrong in that picture. But, what I want is the version of what these people said that doesn't treat it as so completely obvious that I don't count. That they don't even bother mentioning that I exist to say that no, but not, not that person. Because it's so obvious that we don't count because it's this country that said these things. I don't even... Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what it comes down to. People love the U.S. Civil War because they love one of these two countries. The country of equality and the country of racism, of, of white supremacy. And whichever one you love, you can love this war.